Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here, creator of uh, Schoolism.com as well as many other things. And today I want to go over this painting. This is a creature coming out from its very secure, very hidden kind of uh, environment into the open where there's sun. There's so many ways to start an illustration, to start a painting. Sometimes you just go straight into color. Sometimes you do line drawings. Sometimes you do a black and white painting first. Sometimes you do a combination. Uh, in this case, I am just doing a monochromatic sketch, right? I'm not doing it grayscale, but I'm also not going fully, fully into color. I thought of, about this in terms of uh, what's the most important thing with this. And I felt like the most important thing was the pattern of light that's about to occur, okay? And the, the pattern of light, the importance is that creature is coming from a place that's dark and into the sun, into the light, right? So as I start to sketch, that's what I have in mind. I'm only sketching with one tone, right? I'm sketching with a darker tone on top of the colored kind of canvas that I'm starting with. This forces me to really simplify my thinking. What things will be in light? What things will be in shadow? This makes it just very clear for people to understand. And so now that I have my kind of general lighting scheme set up. I start adding in some color, right? I start changing some of those colors into a darker tone, right? A cooler tone. Remember the whole entire point of this is that this creature is coming into the light. So all the dark stuff needs to kind of unify together a lot more and needs to feel quite separated from the parts in the light. And that's something I'm really thinking about as I'm going forward in my painting. You can see there are details in the very, very back there, but it's hard to see. It's hard for me to see. And it's meant to be like that, right? Just like in real life, when you're looking into the darkness, you're in the light, you're looking into the shadows, into the darkness there. It takes some time for our eyes to adjust, right? And during that time, you're kind of sort of seeing some sort of descriptions, right? And it's not super clear. Well, I want to create the same kind of feeling in this painting, in, right? So I'm keeping all the tones quite close together. Now I'm texturing a bit of the uh, mid-ground here. Same kind of thing as the background. I'm keeping these tones quite close to the tones I'm painting on top of because I don't want you to notice them that much, right? I want there to be a very clear message here where you notice the light and shadow first, far before you would notice any kind of textures in those trees, right? Of course, in the very beginning, it's light, dark, that's it. There's no kind of transitional kind of stuff here. So with these little bits that I'm adding in here, I'm essentially, I'm creating a transition going from the really, really dark stuff to the mid-tones here. I do that throughout. And I do that for the light areas transitioning into the shadowy area. It doesn't happen just abruptly where all of a sudden you see some shadows and then you see more shadows and then you see less light and then you see less light until it becomes everything's in the shadow right but just creating that bit of a transition now one of the reasons that i like the idea of this thing coming from the shadows into direct light sunny light one it's interesting because the light it represents danger right now everybody can see this creature but traditionally doesn't mean danger, it means the opposite, and the darkness means the danger. So I thought that that was a very interesting juxtaposition, but also I love the idea of this very vibrant, very bright grass uh, coming in and bouncing the light off of the grass to the underside of the creature, which I'm doing right now. So there's a tiny bit of an influence of that green from the grass onto the belly of this creature and the undersides of those uh, hind legs there. I decided to make generally the entire base color of the creature lighter. This way there's a nice juxtaposition between the background and this creature creating another layer of contrast. And of course because the head is turned away from the light and the direct light is hitting those ears, that's gonna create some bit of subsurface scattering, penetrating through the ears, illuminating those ears a bit, and we could see the warmth of the flesh influencing those colors there. A bunch of detail on the eye, since that is the focal point, touch-ups for texture, touching up the lighting. And then I also want to add in a bit of atmospheric lighting, right? And really showing that light coming in to the scene and influencing uh, this creature. 
and generally the scene itself. You know, sometimes when it's the right kind of light, you see these little specks in the air. It could be dust, it could be pollen, it could be little tiny bits in the air just floating around. You know, the more correct subtleties you have in a painting, an illustration, the more realistic it feels. And there you go, all done. Thank you so much for watching, take care. And don't forget to check out schoolism.com because I also teach art on there as well. All right, take care everybody.